Welcome to the fastest chaos round of 60 in a between Polar with the Chinese very quick start here and Frost 9 with the Burmese Halberdiers to defend said that I like the early castle from Frost crazy close map generation with what around Mr. Zatu do you from live broadcasting from our new station in Switzerland is here what do you think about map and matchup here yeah hello everybody yeah very interesting to see I mean uh Chinese have a really great start, obviously, and the Polar trying to use that to his advantage, but only managing to kill, I think, one villager, if at all. So uh, I, I would have hoped for more if I was on Polar side, and now it's going to be difficult probably to go up against the elephants here. But we'll see. Yeah, I'm also very skeptical about the camels by, by Polar. Camels don't really help against elephants. I mean, I guess they are better than cavalier against elephants. And he is trying to play Camel Champ here. And the elephants are now coming out against the Helvidiers. Obviously, Camels were quite useless. Um, hmm. I like that his siege being added already, but I don't think Polar start was necessarily good enough here. Even though he should start with a big pop lead as Chinese. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. So he has a uh, big pop lead, obviously, and he is, has only two barracks up. If he had like five barracks up, and was producing mass. Halberdiers and probably it should be looking better, but so far it's not looking bad. He's adding mass towers already putting into the speech. I think you need to scream a bit because the elephants are right now louder than you in my ears already. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, I'll try. Shout casting, Zai. Let's go. <laughs> Rams also on the field. I like that the tower creep here by Polar and seven guard towers this time, but they're actually keeps. So it isn't polar esque enough, maybe. Forward market being added as well. Obviously, we're tight on space, even though like, Polar does have some backspace and some TCs up. But I feel like elephants on this generation probably very dominant. And what do you really do here with Chinese? Probably mass on it is what is needed. Be needed, but already bombard cannons coming out by Frost as well. I mean, I think the towers and Chukunu plus uh, the plus Albedia should be fine. And then uh, just go for a ramp and push, and so the elephants have to defend and cannot really attack. And then forward three with the towers should be a good option for him here. Yeah. And barracks is what Polar needs, more. says Keller. Yeah, so we've only got three barracks, which is like crazy against elephants. Yeah, and the queue is full. I mean, if he had like, yeah, as I said, five, and he's even playing ten, so yeah, perhaps it's a correct call, even to go for ten. And just go for mass, uh, mass direct production here in the beginning. You see, there's a lot of food and wood that you can put to put to use for Albert Yes. Yeah, currently mainly yeah. making champions. Those champions are also being mixed in by Frost now, which I like a lot. As the cavalry is kind of not coming by Polar anymore, so the champions plus elephant combination should kind of wreck everything here the tower Chukunu have been doing quite well so far polar almost got a castle up in frost back as well at like 67 percent but elephants are hammering it down heavily and i like frost's position yeah but frost is out of food completely right and he's adding food equal now but there's not much space to add food because he's trying to add some in the north but it's like uh whew. It's gonna be tight on space, so I really have to, to see if he manages to get that food equal up, otherwise he will be out of uh, out of army very soon, because he cannot produce any more right now. That is true, he needs to win with this one death ball army, but if Frost can do something, it's winning with this one death ball army, right? And yeah, I, mean, I don't see too much army on Polar's side anymore. Yeah. yeah. Adding an Aaron by now as well, because he does have the rest for the man. The bomber can again, it's a beautiful shots on the Jukonu as well. Now the elephant on there, Castus is falling, and there's not too much gray on the map anymore. And Polar calls the GG. Well played here. Yep. And Polar's saying that he should have taken the market earlier, so. Uh, p perhaps, but I think more barracks would have also done the job. Uh, so defending against the big elephant hard push with your own hearts, uh, perhaps some champions mixed in. I think that could have been enough to at least uh, to at least stall him. Probably not kill the bombard cannon. That would be hard, but uh, still, just hold the push. 
Nein, der Ingame-Chat. I was wondering where Polo was saying it. This capture edge doesn't show the in-game chat after the game. Um, is saying to kill Frost, you need 100 barracks and a god on your side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have Chinese on the on this on the small map, and you don't have the extra villager generation, which we have seen a couple of times already, which is usually an advantage for the Sif that doesn't get as many villagers or um, wants yeah, to you know, catch up with the Chinese. Uh, but yeah, th this game is six to three villagers, and he couldn't convert it into an early, early win there. And Frost is just super good outside defending early. So yeah, really I would have much preferred to see Cavalier, uh, even Cavalier probably, even though it's like Chinese, I don't know, or Cavalier like or Cavalier Arp maybe even as an opening, I think by China. Mm, perhaps, perhaps I don't know. I do, I do like yeah mm, perhaps even go for mass champions could have also been an option because it takes a long while until the elephants come out because he will not commit for elephant in the first place and then overrun him with champions because uh, it will be difficult once the you know once the uh, castle goes up to attack with the with the camels but yeah camels not sure perhaps one camel in the beginning and then cavalier. So kind of late picks for both. Polar still has Bengali, Spanish, and Malians. Very mighty sips, I feel like, against kind of everything but Sicilians, maybe. Um, even though Sicilians is a bit weird as a first pick as well, but I think most of the strong sips were banned. Um, and I think they started game two. Well. Yeah. Oh no, so I've already burning. seen the sips. Yeah, me too. Okay, so no prediction then. Hm. Yeah, I was a bit too worried to be late. Mm. Persians, millions, what do you think? Um. I don't know how would do the Gibetto do against the, the war elephants. Mm, don't think good enough. Series can't be over, killer. It's one zero. I think, I think Frost is not going to go elephants here. At least not not like the typical elephant ram push style. I think he's going to go camel savar push. And do some bombard cannons on the side if there's water. <laughs> I've seen that from him a couple of times, and uh, I think that could be very good against Marlins here. Yeah, he thinks he's going elephant on a Jesse trim, which is what's what you said, I think. I was looking at something else. Um, no, I was I was saying the complete opposite. He's not going elephant on a Jesse trim. He's going to go Savar and elephant camels. Really, but not against Malians, though, right? I mean, aren't their camels just too good? I mean, you can mix in Hevedias, but... Okay, I, I was wrong. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> okay, Two I'm, castles I'm placed? There's no spoilers, because that's also what I'm seeing. Um, yeah, I'm live. Um, five barracks right, and right, okay. three castles for Frost. And Polar also early castles. So he really wants to go better. This is an interesting map, very far generation, so that really benefits Frost perhaps if he goes for an, uh, the elephant push. Uh, so probably the right call. You cannot dock on this icy terrain, can you? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's no, usually so, a generation okay. that doesn't so entail no water. water. I was putting everything yeah, onto the castle. <clears throat> so he really does want his first elephants to come out quick or like he wants to be safe from the rush, right? It's kind of a long map though, which is kind of beautiful for the non-treadmill crane safe here. So I think a good map draw for 
Frost at least to survive the um, rush by the Malians. Once again, massive camel army by Polar against an elephant that's an opponent that's going help elephant for the second time. So kind of two counters to camels coming out against a massive camel army. Once again, I think I would have preferred Cavalier. But it's hard because you obviously you have to scout it first and then get to switch your queue because Sava might be coming out and then you definitely want to go camels. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's tough just from the Sif. Uh, we'll see. I, I would like to see some monsters work from him, to be fair. Um, could help. Yes. The Polar is going Camel SO, I guess, as the comp. Did he take an early market here this time after saying yeah, yeah. he needed to market he, he last time? Yeah, he right after. Yeah. Ah, that's right. Deleting markets, my god. I think Paul is the only player who still does that, right? I mean, I don't know, but depends on the map, probably. So in this map, you have a lot of space, so I'm not sure why you, you would delete it. On the last map, I could have understand that way more, because uh, there was no space to build. Yeah, Polo has some camels in the back of Frost, but Frost already sending Helvetius there, seeing them from far away. And that's for defending that raid with ease. Uh, first battle in the middle now. A massive camel army against Help War Elephant. And yeah, the camels do have to go back again. Kind of have to wait for their battle support to come out as they are quite massively in production by Polar. Polar taking over kind of his side of the map. Nobody really expanding to the other side yet. Besides uh, Polar's army or like the sides are just like the unbuildable terrain, but it also kind of divides the map into it. Yeah, and seeing Frost's space here with the five castles at one place, I would have really liked the Keller approach here and go for a mass control, uh, mass map control and uh, kill castles and sides and so on. And then try to survive the initial push and go for raids in the back. Big fight in the middle now. SO firing at the war elephants. Yeah, Apollo also trying to go for the early raids. Camels, I mean, many camels are kind of okay at killing villagers, but yeah, there is the citadel castles for the Persians as well helping out. Uh, with the defense, and Frost is making his equal quite close to his um, initial castles, so the castles are still helping at defending raids because Apollo's base layout is kind of really nice. It's a ring of TCs around a ring of castles, so. Here's the retreating point, and the Citadel castles can fire upon uh, early raids there. Yeah, and now the audience all are exposed, and with the recent buffs to the elephants, they now move very quickly towards the siege onagers, trying to snipe them. Now the battles come to help, but a lot of siege onagers are some siege onagers. Oh, God, elephants used to be like the, the same speed as siege onagers. They're like way faster now. Yep. Yeah, now the Gebetto trying to work away at the elephants. Now he really has a micro a lot here. Um, but they are not being off now, they're being micro away. The top, we see some camels going down or fighting against the elephants at least. So, cost efficiently, could, could be even, even. <laughs> but uh, a lot of elephants survive. Uh, Keller officially called himself Dump because the war elephants are 0 0.88 speed and the sea giant was 0 0.6 speed. Mm. So, one thing that um, Frost did well here is to get the two relics on his side. Uh, and perhaps, uh, no, the third one was taken by Paula in the middle, I think. But uh, those two could have been contested by Paula, maybe, to get the relic advantage here. Uh, he will have that by 3 to 2, I believe, if he gets the one on the bottom uh, and the top set, which he's getting right now. Uh, but he could have had maybe 4 1 or 8 5 0 if he went for that earlier. Not sure if it will matter though, but the uh, Gebetos seem to go quite decently against the elephants, at least when there are not that many around. Yeah, as long as they can stay alive here, there is some onagers for Polar. Yeah, I'm also not sure if they got faster. I thought it was just about if the elephants are faster or the onagers. Um, I think it was an update where they got faster, but maybe it's not the last one. I think it was the last one, actually. 
A nice raid though here by Polar on the Bombardkins with the light cap. Obviously, having that extra attack really helps to bring them down even quicker. And Polar's at pop cap here, uh, so he will certainly make that or try to defend this, this push here uh, by Frost. Can you guys hear Zayu? Because I'm actually struggling a bit. If, if you can hear him, it's okay, I guess. I mean, I can't really talk louder right now. <laughs> uh, Trust is... Like, it's big middle fight here mainly. It's not much else happening on the map. So, like, the style difference um, thing that I mentioned. Polar tried the early raids. Trust Seeker was too well defended for that. Also, Kevin's maybe not good enough. And the Death Ball too dangerous that he can't really go raid right now. The elephants are killing all the trebs! Yeah. And it's not too bad. Like, two elephants are like one trap, post wise, I guess. So, I guess it's okay. At least in gold amounts. <laughs> Betos are pretty good at sniping trebuchets. Oh boy, but now they ate an onager shot. Finally, but Polar is somewhat stabilizing, right? He has the traps now, he's trying to push back, but the better went back too far. Might lose one or two traps here, but he can probably move forward. He has moved like five forward against the Bombard Cannon Switcher, like now. Do you see a Savar switch by Frost? Yeah, now the, the Kemet might be an option again. So, uh, we saw that the Elephants were not really working, they just too slow. Ooh, to get us 400 to HP! Saves the castle, all the traps go down. Sorry, one, two, elaborate on that. Yeah, no, all good. So, yeah, kind of a stalemate fight in the middle, more or less. Although Frost did kill one castle in a second about to fall here. Uh, Polar is adding more castles to this one. He has three castles in a row here. And he really has to be careful not to lose them to the siege aggression here from Frost. Yeah, one goes down, another new one will go up top, so it will be still a three castle setup there. Um, do we have an advantage late game for, for Malians? Yeah, with the raiding potential certainly. I think the elephants are just not doing anything late game. And uh, I think the raids from from Malians can be extremely strong. And I know that Polar is a very good raider, so he will make sure to take advantage of that. Ah, well, Perton's also getting Hussar and, and Helvet here, so technically they have, I think, the better trash. So trash foes, I guess. Uh, but mainly they have Savar right now who are jumping onto the Siege Onagers. Frost still trying to work away on that castle. Stig Venomas is still alive and Frost is doing a good job here, I think. And I agree with Chad on that in this matchup. That he's at least holding it even here. Um, is investing a lot of stone on that forward though. And now even, uh, of course, the characteristic polar towers being added there in the middle to delay uh, Frost's push, I think. Yeah, we have, a, we have a problem here though for polar. He has 150 villagers and has 50 more in the queue. Oh boy, it reminds a bit of Deathmatch World Cup 5, polar versus Miguel. Yeah, uh, polar also played really well but lost to his uh, villager amounts. He really has to delete uh, like 20 at least and unqueue all of the rest and then he will also have enough food. He has like 4k gold and the, the rest of the rest look also fine if he unqueues those villagers. So he really needs to get a bigger army here to be able to contest those traps. If he has a couple of light cap or... Oh, know, big bad. shots on the battle. Oh, Bomber can He can stop this, but not like this. And now he just lost three cards. It's more or less for free because he couldn't use any army. Uh, he only has that 35 Gebetto, right? He doesn't have any... Doesn't really... Dare so. Oh, just not coming on the field! Oh my god! Like, look at the queue, right? He has 24, it's so cute! Yeah. But he's not making the... And therefore he's yeah. not doing anything right now, but my friend Gebetto... Ah, Frosto moving in with the raid, trying to help his friend out. Yeah. I think he, he, he noticed, though. He unqueued all of the bills, he deleted a couple even before the raid came in. And now yeah. it's down to 141, which is better. I mean, optimal, but it's still fine. And I think the raid was the probably the Ooh, decent shot. Uh, stay helping Polar because it made him look at his will card. Yeah, 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 true. Uh, I, I do like uh, Frost's 
position here a lot though now and uh, since he pushed all the castles and he also has taken the third relic uh, somehow uh, I, no actually there are six relics on this map if I see that correctly it's three to one Fowler is holding one in the castle at the north and there's one not taken by him at his south of the base basically um, yeah so three is I think all you can ask for here Yep, and I like the push angle to the north from Frost, but he did lose all of his traps but one to the Gebetto. So, Paul is doing a decent job for the Gebetto, lost quite a few Gebetto in that process though. But look at the bank, 7,000 gold in the bank for Paul, oh. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, he can full queue a lot of things here, but he, he just can't take the fight because he doesn't have enough army. And um, I think it would be more beneficial here to have even 100 villagers and not full pop. Oh, as you see, big as all shots here, taking down the Gebetto. That's only on it, or shots. But uh, yeah, now at least uh, he's down to 120 something, right? Um, so at least it's not 140 anymore. And I think we can see that now that uh, that has happened, Paula seems to have a competitive army again. I think he will push Frost back on the other side of the ice here. Yep, and now we see all the valuable units come out. A lot of SO and a lot of traps, and now we see big push here by Polar going back uh, at Frost. Yeah, Polar now with the pushback. By the way, somebody could at least end the prediction for game one, maybe. Um, there's five traps working on that castle, kind of looking not too shabby for Polar, both pretty set up on farming economy 60 to 40, now the other shots versus the traps, but that castle will finally fall, and with very gold heavy comp here for Polar, maybe he can make it happen as Frost Gold Bank isn't looking too good. Yeah, it, it isn't, but, but Polar lost a lot of onages here, and uh, Frost lost only that one castle, which isn't too bad. Killed all the traps, killed a lot of SO, and I think Frost's eco is just not uh, set up in a way to mine all that gold. He has still, still so much gold to mine uh, on the bottom and on the on the top, uh, his main gold, uh, probably, that is. So it's like a lot. Maybe you could check how much gold there is for each pair to mine. Uh, I think that takes too much time, but... Um, his, his, his eco is set up very well for war elephants, right? But now he made the Savar switch, so he actually doesn't need as much food and more gold. But he kind of has a war elephant uh, eco, while, well, at least for a bit now, he was playing mainly Savar, shifting the, the army to the north now. Yeah, he's like Savar, Hulk, and for that I think the eco looks, looks fine. And uh, I just checked a bit for the gold. I think there is about uh, 1k gold left to mine for Polar, where there is uh, like 10k left to mine for Frost. So this is looking extremely good for Frost. Mm, Polar, uh, Frost so. switched to the north though, took out a castle, but might lose all his traps here on the way back. Yeah, I think the better should get them all, right? Yeah, they should. Oh, unprotected siege honor though by Polar going at the stable here. Uh oh, I feel they could go down really easily here by some Savar moving forward. And one Savar just putting there. And now some elephants as well in the onages. Yeah, because the Gebettos were hunting down the traps. Polar in turn loses his onagers' traps. Probably more gold invested in that though. And the Patata flying in with the. Really cool jokes. Yeah, and Polar still hasn't collected his two relics, so that will cost him long term. Probably already 1k gold uh, not collected due to that. And he'll run out of gold very soon. He has no gold left to mine now. Actually, he has like 600 in the bottom. He's not mining, but that's it. Where do you see five relics to be collected? No, it's it's three collected for Frost and one for Polar. And Polar has not collected two of his relics. Ah, yeah, there's one up there.
Why, why would Gray be Quirr? Ah, it's a zero half asking. I'm sure it looks at the shaders. And Polar uh, putting out the southern castle. There's just a lot of castles on the map that are quite like, all like equally important. And I feel like players are mainly trading castles right now and, and trading siege units. While Polar looks like has mined all his gold though. Yeah, absolutely. And this is going to be a problem here. One 5k, 6k. Now I'm checking for the coin. Um, and yeah, there's like 6k still on the main gold, even all alone, I think. For Frost, so. <laughs> I think this game. I think I get to the 5 hour prediction. It's like, I don't think this is a long game. Yeah, 12 isn't sure how Marians win this late. Um, what well, are you said with raids? And keep, uh, keeping a better alive, I guess, right? It's like better light calf could maybe win against like Bossar something. But the problem is Frost will probably still have a gold army. And Zayu and uh, sorry, Zayu. Polar um, already has to transition away from that as we do see some uh, uh, light calf on the pitch. Yeah. He only has his um, Gobedos now that he has to keep alive. And this will be really tough. Uh, now the big push again here by Frost with like 20 war elephants. And the gold completely out by, for, for Polar. He has a couple of traps and two onagers left, but that, that's it. And I feel, or I fear, that the big Savar army here could, could end the game really quickly. Or even elephant. Well, that's the last stone in the south where he could get some gold by... The selling, maybe the, I don't know what the wood press is even, they look for Polar's market because he deleted it, so he can't sell it. Anymore, and there's a monk with a relic in the battlefield! Yeah, finally! Kind of <laughs> running around the Gebetto, trying to bait the elephants or what? Kind of worked. Elephants got a decent, uh, the Gebetto got a decent trade, but now the Onager shots, will they hit? Oh! Uh... Well, it seemed to like hit a bit, but no better died to it. Yeah, that was a so good it didn't hit. really hit because Gebetto don't have HP, so they should die, right? <laughs> Great pathing, it worked good for Paula. So new and improved. And ironically, they seem to do quite well actually with the elephants, but they are just not as pop efficient. And now we see the other oh! battle. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no! Yeah, 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 yeah. And also the trap for Polar yeah, just going forward without any protection. Yeah, yeah, what are they yeah. even shooting at? They're, they don't seem to be aiming at a castle. He sent the forward to kill a stable? What? Why? Yeah, sure, but they're completely unprotected. Now he's sending them the, the Gebettos for protection there. Perhaps he just wants to make a counter attack because he can't defend against Frost Push. Uh, but the uh, problem is that yeah. I don't think that a base trade would work for him here. No, like I don't think he can get a base trade. <laughs> That's the main problem with the base trade is that like Frost space has so much space while Frost is already kind of all over the base of Polar. I mean Polar does have Tigui of course which should help him inflict some losses as Frost is all around his base but there's like four trebuchets working on the main castles and the elephants. Kind of a bit going uncountered here. Paula had a decent mid game with a lot more gold, but I um, think the bank and the elephants should carry Frost through here as the elephants also seem to be sniping the traps forward, and Savar will probably end that counter push there. Yep, and indeed the game is being called by Paula, so it's 2 0. And as Nili said, what do you need against Tazzy? And everybody told him, patience, maybe. Normally, Polar is a very patient player, though. So. Yeah, it's it's so hard against Frost, though. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've played him so many times and I've tried different things. And I tried ending it fast, which didn't work because he defended so well. I tried to get into the really long game and be really patient, but he just has such a good micro of the onagers and such a good awareness of what's important and where to push and what army comp to go for. So that also didn't work. So it's really tough against Frost. Yeah.
It is, and that's why for me it is still the big favorite. Frost is still the big favorite to, or not the big favorite, but uh, the favorite to win the whole thing. It's really hard to find an answer to him, and he tails take the win home with the Persians against Polar's remaining first pick, the Malians. So now let's get some sips for game three, shall we? Sure. I'm going to say that we will not see Malay here. That was just a troll pick. <laughs> and I'm going to say we see... Yeah, Incas should be pretty good here against a lot of Sifs. So I'm going to say Incas against Spanish. Hmm. I wanted to say Incas, Bengal. I'll say Incas, Bengal. I'm just like predicting unfortunateness for first. But maybe because of the Incas are so likely, Polar shouldn't pick that, right? So, uh, Incas Aztecs, Mesuwa, let's go. Hmm. That's a good good uh, snipe, though, I think, for Polar. I think Aztecs can do quite well against Incas. Yeah, well, it's just my guess, right? I, I haven't looked yet. Oh, okay. Uh, me neither. But that would be good for Polar. Uh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I'm right. <laughs> Inca Spanish. Spanish. Okay. Two points yeah, it kind of made a lot of sense, right? Paula wants to lose, use his next strongest sieve before he goes out here against Frost. And the Inca Sim code, like we agreed on that, right? But I wanted to say something else in you, so I thought, uh, let's say Aztec. Aztecs are Giga Trash. Malay versus Aztecs. That would have been the best matchup that would have worked, definitely. We can still see it. Polar just needs to win this game, then they pick Malay and Essex. Let's go. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and the Essex would, I think, have beaten Incas, no? I think Essex would have been great against Incas. Yeah, exactly. I think they would be, would be would have been fine. You can make good infantry units with Essex. You can make Siege on a jury. I think you have what it takes to take down Incas. Except that when it's water, then probably not. When it's water, Spanish should have everything that you need to take down Incas, though. So, as for a longer set, we are should pop our water map here, I think. Yep, and I'm live. I am too, and we have a little bit of water. But is that walkable? I don't think it's walkable. Four legs plus oasis, says Frost. All right, he's already. Like, we are three people casting this game right now. Zayu, Otter, and Frost. Yeah, and Frost again with a castle start here against Polar's um, stable start. So let's see. He will probably get that castle up early enough. And uh, let's see if we see a re by, by Polar, though, as he might fear um, that uh, he wants a water map. We saw a re good by Polar, but uh, no re yet, still has 18 seconds to go as the chariot is worth walking in. We have a Tsar Constantine once again, we already saw that in Keller versus Twepi, and it does at least delay the castle here, but probably won't stop it as it has in so many percentages. Frost lost two villagers though, and Polar doesn't re. Yeah, Polar lost one villager here at his castle, but uh, not too big, uh, obviously, not the shipping out. to kill Spanish villagers. Yeah. yeah, maybe the Tsar Constantine Most was the reason he didn't re, because it's good for Spanish, right, to have a strong hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has an early uh, early monastery up here uh, for Polar, and uh, he's housed though, so he cannot produce that monk to collect the relics. Uh, he's, But he's now trying to get the relics, I think. It's a really weird map as well, because the middle woodland is a hill, so... If you cut it, you can make castles there. That mm. could be a good angle. To, yeah. Or just like yeah. cut a bit with the onagers where your army is to place castles like around the side you're pushing on the hill, right? Not necessarily cut the whole through yeah. it, but cut a little space for a castle, cut a little space for a castle. So you can make hill castles here as the other ground is quite flat. Yeah, I think Frost will do that. I had a similar generation with uh, with this one, except the four legs thing that wasn't on that map. But he did exactly the same thing, and he's already cutting with his Oninger. He's doing it as you as you said. Yes. Yeah, Frost always likes I, to I transform the map to a map he likes more. 
Like, there's, there's adapting to the map and there's adapting the map to you. <laughs> exactly. And, I would, and front I would will make this a Black Forest game through the middle, I think. I would have loved to see back dogs for, I mean, not back dogs, front dogs for Polar. So sneaking a villager up that top wood line for Frost and just building a sneaky corner uh, in Frost's pond just to go for those can gannons and basically destroy half of the space. A lot of the paladins died to the Inca, <coughs> uh, Kamayuks, and Halberdiers. Oof. Okay, that's saying I would rather resign than cut to the wood here. That's the difference between a good player and a great player. <laughs> Pole is progressing uh, yeah, along the land, though. I think Pole is taking away more map control right now. He does have a strong army with a Kong Champ Paladin. But it feels a bit like we're making three gold units, and we're not really sure what we're doing with them. Um, and I think more honor just would be nice. Don't don't honor just counter Incas usually. But it's against Frost, so I yeah. don't know if you want to honor draw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he doesn't have... Siege Engineers, though uh, Onage is not the strongest unit here for Spanish. Uh, so yeah, on closed maps or on maps where the attacking passage is not that large as in this one, it's quite tough. Uh, Paula saying is I, Paula saying I hear you and it's exactly the same that I said when I was playing Frost. You can hear the cuts from the Onagers from miles away. Uh, so even in your own base, I think. So uh, he knows what's up. He knows what's up. And this person saying mute sound <laughs> as the paladins that are indeed a bit of a weird choice against the like man mainly anti calf in in the um, uh, it's actually the conquistadors going in there to the back and Rossami is all with his cut like he's trying to make this happen one push through the middle and uh, he doesn't care that the middle had a wood line it's just gonna be gone soon but uh, I also like that kind of the angle that Polo is going for it's very narrow there though with the water so. Should be a great fighting spot for Kamaguk. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's see how the fight goes. See, the champion's not really in position. They should be in the front here, but they are not. Now the Kamaguks are just destroying everything that's left in the world. Oh my. Oh, yeah, how I much damage look. are the Kongs doing? The Kongs aren't even doing that great of damage, right? Oh boy. Ah, uh, it's okay, but it's not great. Yeah, and they're hard to migrate. All the paladin get melted, all the traps get melted, even the Kongs are getting melted as everything is on a horse. I think hand cannons might have been the better choice here, even than Kongs. Yeah, probably. They get yeah. bonus damage I mean, as well against infantry, additional to their high base um, damage. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they would have been good for sure. Uh, this was just so brutal. I mean, the 60 camus clearing up the, the whole push there. Uh, and he, I mean, Frost has a solid bank still because Incas are so cheap in unit production and he's still pushing through the middle with a lot of army and towers. I mean, this is, this is Frost, uh, Frost at, at, its, uh, at its core, his core, I would say. Uh, but Polar cut as well, cut a way in for the Paladins to snipe the Onagers. And he won't get all of them and he will lose these Paladins, but they're quite useless in the fights normally. So against the Siege, they did quite well, cleaned up most of the Onagers there. Yeah? That tower push yeah, is ridiculous though. Yeah, yeah. And I will see the trap push through the middle from that hill. It's complete and, deforestation. Uh, Polar yeah. still, Polar's still trying to go now from the back. So let's see what this space trade push here now will do. <laughs> I mean, this part might work out because now that Frost has cut more, his army is even more forward, meaning it takes a long, really long time for him to, to go to the back now. Both players are full popped, and now the Kamayuk are coming back. The question is will the Kong, this time with champions, do a little better against 37 Kamayuk still? Yeah, and even the Kamayuk is going back. Now let's see the fight now here as the Kamayuk and the champions engage. And the champions... Kamayuks are still eating and... everything, man! <laughs> Kamayuks are OP against nothing, everything but auditors. You really need auditors. The other side, Frost has now the hill and... Uh, what? How was the end? He's kind of running out of stone now. So maybe some of these back towers should have been more at the front. 
Is AI is pointing yeah. out. Onager war there at the front. Uh, nobody getting siege. Oh no, actually, the better Onager's there for Spanish. I, I always tend to think Spanish get siege engineers, but they don't. So, hmm, that's a problem with Onager's for Spanish then, right? Because the Incas have the better Onager's and the hill as well here. Yeah, siege engineers is a huge problem. But they don't have that. Are we seeing Inca River? Inca, like, if it's not a water map, Inca seem actually to be a decent choice against Spanish. If they survive the start, I guess. And that was really easy on this map. I mean, Inca, I think, is generally a really strong Sith. Uh, even on water, they have really good water, except for Ken Gallant, which is missing. So you, you might have problems coming through because you cannot do anything once you get the water. But winning the water is pretty, pretty uh, easy with Inca. And also their land is really strong, uh, so Inca is actually a really good, really good Sith. Um, just gets countered by by Onager most of the time, so that's why we don't see them as much. Yeah, but with this draft probably a bit more viable as ten Sif less as all Sifs with the random bands than um, in yeah. like tournaments with less bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and now has powers costing like to put their stone and so on. I mean, they have really strong things going for them. Yeah, plus now bought some stone or got some stones somewhere. I don't see him really on stone without the two villagers. And I think Polo was all, always trying to push the spot with the stone, right? So, like, Frost can't fortify his push as much. Which I actually like, like, as an angle choice. In general. But he is losing his base. Needs to relocate. The main economy is a bit at the top there. It's not really around the hill too much. I guess he has some at the right. And a lot of fish trap beacon, holy! But not the fish trap step back Black Forest players hit. Yeah, I mean, his, his eco is solid, right? I think Polar's. Uh, he could have a little bit more on the right frost. Uh, right frost, right hand side. Uh, but, okay, I guess. Um... Polar is calling the game, but more importantly, he's already calling the tournament. Man, no spoilers, Polar. Why? <laughs> Man, isn't Polar isn't the admin, right? So at least, like, we, like, you might say this, but we know Polar didn't, can't rig the tournament. I mean, maybe yeah, he's secretly maybe playing know, all of right? Frost's opponents now, but. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, but uh, really dominant performance here by Frost. Um, I mean, not much to say. Just every game. Super clinical execution. And uh, yeah, this last game was uh, Frost style if I've seen one. <laughs> it was. I mean, part of the last rest. I feel like he could have played a bit longer, but probably all those Kamiyuks eating all his attacks was a bit demoralizing. And yeah, how to ever like get the middle position with all these towers, I guess. And his ego is kind of exposed now, right? Yeah, if you have the middle here, you can just go into any direction really quickly and trap down everything from the hill. I mean, almost everything. It's like having having the water in the middle with cannon galleons in a way, and then all the towers there. So there's just no way for 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 Polar to ever get that uh, unless he completely denies all the eco by frost on the outside and then comes in with the ramps at some point. But it, that's that's super tough. I mean, still very silent, by the way. Well, now they, I can hear you fine when there's no game going. But... Yeah, okay. Maybe it got a bit better. I don't know. Did you change something? Yeah, I tried, but it's uh, I can't find anything to increase the sound for the for the microphone even further. Polar had way more rest collected here. Uh, Frost invested a lot into your villager time into the middle with the towers, right? And I mean, you also have to give him credit for like cutting all that, right? That's a lot of effort. Yeah. Um, yeah. Clicking all those onages <laughs> and all those trees, and they while also defending his base. 
Yeah, Greenpeace will not be happy, man. They won't. Big deforestation. Somebody mentioned calling the Fridays for Future as well. Oh, yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, not good for the climate, what the Incas are doing here. But, I mean, come on, give, give the Incas a break. I mean, uh, the Spanish have done with, with colonizing, well, for example, the Incas. Uh, way more uh, worse things to the environment, I think, than, than the Incas were ever about to do. So getting some polluting revenge for the Incas doesn't feel too bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you, Mr. Frost. Hello, hello, hello. Good hello. evening. How are you doing? I'm good, feeling good. Um, do you like to click on it or some trees? Oh uh, yeah, I think I've done it a couple of times in my days. Yeah, I good that we had a training game, huh, Frost? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that game through the whole game. Yeah. We play. <laughs> it, it was just like that game. Yeah. Exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah, With congrats. With this chill in the forest. Congrats yeah. to reaching the quarterfinals of The Fastest Chaos. With a quite Thank ridiculous you. game three and a very clinical setup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had I had to pull this out of uh, that um, I did in this last game. I did it to Sayu and I had to try it against Polar as well. Yeah, so you talked to the game about that you had a similar generation there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we we can start in backwards order this time. Why not? Why not start with the with the Inca Spanish game? Um. So. What do you think about like the Kongs just also melted to to the Kamajuk? Yeah, I was surprised that the Kamajuks were so good against his all, like all of his units. They like melted everything, so that was also surprising to me. But um, yeah, that was very lucky though because I didn't really commit too hard to clean up, clean up his uh, mm. army behind my days. Um, yeah, it looked like once or twice you were a bit out of position with all your army in, in the middle with that that cut bush, right? Yeah, it, it took uh, like too long. I think it took too long to cut through. But um, yeah. Luckily, those units are so very strong against Spanish. Do you think Incas have a good matchup here? Uh, now, after I played it, I think it's decent. I think it's decent. I wouldn't say it's good, but I think it's decent. Uh, I thought Spanish would do better uh, against Incas with the Conquistadors and the Champions. Uh, so I'm a bit surprised, actually. Do you think hand cannons would have been an option? Uh, not really. I think I think conquistadors were were the way to go. So you can just hit and run instead of just stand and die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think conquistadors is better. I think the I also thought about that hand cannons would be better. I don't know. Because you can, yeah, but, but I guess they're more it's mobile. Faster firing. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, you need to I micro them, and it's kind of hard on this map with all the choke points. Okay. Yeah, it was so much wood on this map, like no no space to move on. So yeah, we had to do some cutting. Had to do some. Also, like I didn't like my draft. I think my draft was bad today. Uh, I think he had a better draft. Yeah, I agree by a lot. I really like. I think everybody liked his draft a bit more. I don't know, Zayu. You weren't too disapp. I don't know. What do you? What did you think? No, I wasn't too disapp. I mean, disappointed is also the wrong word. I mean, <laughs> I was not too much in favor of of Paula here. I think a little bit yes, uh, but I think Incas do very well against a lot of civs here uh, by Paula, so they should be fine. Persians, I know that you can play very well, and uh, you got the Sicilians through even, so they should also do fine. And the Byzantines, no joke either. So I mean, so I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't too, let's say, uh, worried, worried for you in terms of the draft. Okay. I have yeah, one I, more I question. Actually, I was a bit worried actually. Okay, sorry, Walter. No, yeah. go on first. Go. No, no, I was just going to say it. Um, it was going to come down to like the sim matchups in the game. Um, if I had some good, like decent matchups, maybe I could win. Because I felt like my draft was weaker. Um, I think my top four saves are weaker than his top four saves. 
but yeah, I managed to do some good at least. I think in general they are, but against his draft they are somewhat okay. Um, what were actually the Sivs left out? Because I didn't catch the, the Siv draft live. And we have Malay and Essex picked here. I think we had Romans, Vikings, Hindustanis. Uh, and one more Siv. I don't remember. I respect the players not picking Hindustanis. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at, at the last Siv I was going to pick. I was like, uh, Malay. Okay, let's go for it. Yeah, did you, like, did you intend on playing them? Uh, I was debating, actually, in first game if I was going to play Malay or Burmese. And then I ended up with thinking, like, Burmese is a stronger save overall, so I went for that. So, no, I don't think I would have intended to play Malay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Weren't picked, right? uh, yeah, maybe Mayans weren't picked, yeah. yeah. But I felt like Mayans would have been bad against the Sibs. Maybe it would have been okay against China, but the rest I think would have been bad for Mayans. Uh, okay. True, I don't really like them in the matchups. I think on, maybe not on either side. I see a lot of May encounters for your Sibs as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> besides Malay, I guess. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, but first matchup was matchup map combination was actually kind of bad for you, right? I mean, this super close generation against Chinese. Yeah, that was so risky. I was also thinking if I should do my re, but if I do my re and it's a water map, then I'm screwed. So I just gambled and played played the first game, and I almost died. That that was very close. I Did think. you almost die? You didn't kill that much villagers. Like I tend uh, to think that the camel start was maybe a mistake, and he could have started um, cavalier up or something with that short distance to snipe villagers. Uh, yeah, maybe, but I felt like I had no space. Like, I couldn't get my pop-up, really. Uh, it didn't go good until I went up the hill. Um, yeah, it felt really bad for, for, for like, the first four or five minutes. But then, we ma then I managed to get up some pop, like some elephants, and then it kind of felt better. Yeah, that hill in the back really saved me. Uh, so I could just snipe his buildings, his towers and everything. Because he was starting to creep in on my base with everything. So it was kind of annoying. Yeah, the tower, Chuko not seemed to work for a bit, but I think in the end the, the elephants are just too powerful. And it was really tough to get like siege out for him, I think, space-wise, or the way he made his base optimistically forward there. Yeah, he went everything forward. It was interesting. But also, if he would have managed to stop me, I wouldn't have had any space to do e eco on. Like, there was yeah. no space to farm on. Yeah, very interesting map. Very risky to play this. <laughs> and also, that first engagement was really bad for me. I think I lost like 25 units and yeah, gained nothing from that. Oh yeah, when you had the bigger Yeah, yeah that, that was really bad. That almost cost me the game, I think. Now I can't hear you at all, so you. Why? No, 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 we are good. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's try again now. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. It's good. And now? Still good. Yeah, go on. That's so weird. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, we we talked about Paula only having two uh, barracks the first game, and you were pushing with the elephant hulk and a little some some champions. I think. Do you think um, if he had maybe five more barracks or so, he could have pulled that push? Yeah, I think that would have been better because he would have been able to uh, produce more units. Yeah, I think that would have been better. I didn't even realize he only had two barracks. Wow. Yeah, I mean. You were completely out of out of food, and you had <laughs> like two barracks completely full queued, and still like five k wood, five k five k food in his bank, and we felt like if those were on the field in I don't know fifty to one hundred halberdiers, 
then yeah. you couldn't. I mean, you couldn't have taken the fight there, but you could have still probably pushed with your bomber cannons and steps. So, not, not sure if he, if he can hold that, but at least he can uh, not lose his complete like his whole army. Yeah, it would have prolonged the game for sure, and then who knows what the outcome would have been. Yeah, well, very interesting game one. <laughs> was actually kind of fun to play it. Um, yeah, we'll play by you, and then we moved on to game number two. That was, we thought that a started better matchup for you, or what do you think about Persians Marians? Uh, I think on that map, that huge map, first I thought it would, would be good for me. But then when I started to notice that he was like hit and running with his uh, gibettos, I guess my elephants, that, that, then it started getting very annoying. Like I felt like I was losing my whole strength before I got to his base. And he just kept on picking off like my elite units, like the gold heavy units. So I don't know. I feel like the map should be good for me, but um, uh, he, he made it hard. He made it very hard for me. I think the battle also... did, did a lot there, really. I think it was like the very, very close game. And if you didn't burn through that much gold, you could have been in trouble, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think the map had a lot of stone. Uh, maybe it had a lot of gold as well, but at least it had a lot of stone. And uh, you could really spread out castles everywhere. It looks like 17k on the map. Okay, yeah. I mean, we saw a lot of castles, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Imagine Japanese on this map. Like, towers everywhere. It would have been fun. At one point, I felt <laughs> like yeah, you did really well when you switched from War Elephants uh, to Savar there for a minute. <laughs> but you had an eco that I felt like was geared towards War Elephant and not really geared to Savar as we were a bit of short on <laughs> gold on in the mid-game. Yeah, I didn't plan to make Savar at, uh, at any point. Like it just happened in mid game there that I felt like, okay, shit, I need to switch to like a faster unit so I can start sniping his siege and his gibettos. So that's why the whole economy was set up for war, war elephants. But yeah, that's why I had no gold when I started making Savar. That was just some a adaptation in mid game. Didn't plan on that. Yeah, uh, the adaptation worked great. Well. Just uh, like eco was, but you kind of kept that eco balance in, in the end, got got enough gold in. Yeah, what do you think, sir? You, do you have more questions? Yeah, I think the eco balance was the key. Uh, can you hear me fine, actually? Yes. Yeah, we, we hear you. Oh. It's so weird because I put the sound lower and now you can hear me better. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. No. Really good. Um, yeah, and the equal balance was re really good, and Polar had uh, at one point 153 villagers, and then he had also seven camels uh, at the back of your base, uh, not doing anything. So his main army was 40 gibettos, and it's just not enough to take it up to the fight against your push. And then he lost uh, like four castles in a row, which he couldn't fight because he had, he had too many villagers. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I think that was that was the main problem here. If if he holds that castles and has like maybe double the amount of gibettos, even coming from multiple sides. That could be really difficult. Yeah, those skill battles were so deadly. Like they sniped everything. If I if I didn't guard my siege, she just went in and sniped everything. So I really had to pay attention to that. But yeah, fair, yeah. fair play to Polar. They did very very good this game, I think. It was very hard. Yeah. I thought he would uh, re on this map actually. Like he wanted a. I thought he wanted a closer map. So I was kind of surprised that we were going to play this map. Yeah, did they take After... a three at all? You, I think felt like you could have also taken it in game three, or probably even should have. Uh, no, we, we didn't use any res. So yeah, I was saving my, <laughs> I was saving my re. <laughs> I didn't want to use it. I think you should have at least read game three. Yeah, that was probably. Probably kind of the perfect map to incast, like long map and that uh, no water. That was too important, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, once again, the draft. Not good today. Have to work on that. Yeah, definitely Not have to train some drafts for whenever you meet Gandhi or Andy again. If that happens, because they are really good with drafting. Right? Yeah, 
but first it's either Tweppy or Chris. Who do you rather play then? Uh, Chris, because I, I play I play a lot with Tweppy, so I don't want to play against Polar and Tweppy. No thanks. But also I want to play against Tweppy because I want him to win, so I don't know. <laughs> I was about to say that because you have to say that part, right? Yeah, I have to say I have to say Tweppy then, but I would prefer to play Chris. Yeah, it would be. It's already been said that that Polar and you had to play right from a solo perspective. Yeah, it's what it is. It sucks, but we 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 had a good run together. It was fun. <laughs>